Uh-oh, welcome to the 2000s. You're at a friend's house and hear a little whisper about this super realistic game called Counter-Strike, a modern warfare round-based FPS. So you hop out to the closest game store and check out the box art. Whoa, this might be really cool. I've only ever played Doom and Goldeneye up to this point. You buy it, install it, launch it, and all it is is a training tutorial with a British guy? Please rescue the hostage by leading him to the rescue zone in the back of the truck. So you easily beat that and look through the menus. Huh? Net games? Hmm. You hit update and try to connect to one of the servers and are greeted with an error. Welcome to WAN, the multiplayer server service Valve used before Steam. The prior story was my experience trying to play Counter-Strike in 2003. A friend of mine told me about CS, so of course I had to see it myself and my 12-year-old head couldn't understand how to play CS online. You see, back in the late 90s and early 2000s, we didn't have centralized systems like Epic Games, Riot Games Service, or most importantly, Steam. All we had were these middlemen server handlers, and who were these guys? Well, game studios at the time had this DIY mentality that stems from the John Carmack era. A game like Doom would come out and the focus during development was let's make a game where single player is the focus. At the time multiplayer was an afterthought, imagine that. So once a game was released back then people would flock to it and want more than the single player experience. So the inception of multiplayer made its debut and this really got people buzzing. The problem with providing networking for a game is that it takes a lot of time and money which you as a game developer don't always have. So this is where middlemen server hosts came into play. We got GameSpy, MPlayer, and the WAN servers. These services allowed game developers to point players toward each other's servers. Unfortunately, the process of getting this stuff to work wasn't always fun, especially for 12-year-old me in mid-2003. Launching retail CS 1.5 out of the box and trying to play it online was such a disappointment. First off, dial-up internet was all I had, then you had to figure out what the latest Counter-Strike patch was, then know how to install the patch, which was way over my head, thus I never got a chance to experience the WAN servers. But WAN had a massive impact on CS in its early days. If you were accustomed to developers distributing patches to web hosts, and installing them yourself, then all of this was a no-brainer. I was just an idiot kid, after all, and people raved about the WAN servers. There was so much control you had versus the ire Steam brought on. You see, Valve purchased the WAN servers because they were rolling in dough with Half-Life 1. They saw the issues with game patches and how confusing it was. They wanted to streamline the process for players. They wanted you to buy a Valve product from a store, take it home, enter the CD key, download the game from their servers with the latest patches so you could experience the updates and bug fixes the second they released it. Of course, it's evolved to become bigger than that since then, but this was really where online games needed to be, on a service like Steam. So unfortunately, WAN started to fall to the wayside, which really put people in a sour mood. Steam runs pretty good today, but back in its beta form, it was quite problematic. The number one reason being you had to be online to use it. As mentioned before, being on a dial-up connection really made this impossible. People in my house wanted to use the phone, so if I wanted to play Half-Life 1, I'd have to be connected to the internet and no one could receive a phone call? This would get a little crazy here in a lot of trouble, and it was problematic for other people too. They thought, why bar access to my game I bought if I can't connect to your service? It made no sense. The out-of-the-box experience was better. Buy the game, install it, patch it, play it. Simple. Among the litany of other issues Steam had, like not always being online, version control update issues, friends list disconnects, it was a rough start. So people naturally preferred the old way, the long way and added insult to injury in 2004, Valve shut down the WAN service, and it forced players into an ultimatum. Use Steam or kick rocks. You had no other choice than that. With all the turbulent issues that plagued the early Steam beta, players were absolutely pissed. They piled onto internet gaming forums and wrote scathing articles about this termination. They hammered Valve for making this choice. People couldn't see what Steam was trying to accomplish here. They were used to the old way of doing things, and this old way wanted to persist. So in 2005, a user named Warfly and a few others got together and said, Hey folks, you know that out-of-the-box shit you guys like so much? <laughs> We're bringing it back. So they developed the Steamless project and called it One Two. Yeah. You can now play the retail out-of-the-box version of CS or any Valve product on their gray area service. Is this legal? I can't tell you, but the WAN2 servers popped off and people could play the game they once loved. CS 1.5, none of that 1.6 garbage. Shields, really? 
So I decided I'm gonna try it out, and after following the step-by-step -step guide, I must say it was quite disappointing initially. I couldn't connect to a majority of the servers, and the ones I could oh, connect to all had these work. strange mods on it. Like this Chinese money system? Eh. Or deathmatch mod? That's alright, but not the original experience I was hoping for. Oh, and it was incredibly laggy, as I'm based out of North America, and majority of the servers are located in, well... China. Also, the game isn't optimized for modern systems, even with the latest retail patch. I mean, look at this resolution. Recycling bin for scale, 1080. But after playing for a few hours, I did see what the allure was. Back then, all the servers would break for you when you tried to connect to them because a new patch was live. So you'd race out to your favorite site and download the patch and see what's new in store. Going through this version control was pretty neat. You got to see a constant evolution of your game. The communities were tight-knit, you'd see the same faces nightly and it was your little underground roosting place, a niche community of people. Now imagine going through this complicated process of patching and getting online to see a whole big hidden world of people running around in these servers. It was probably such a cool and unique experience partaking in online gaming through this service. No one had seen this stuff before. Juan was really special at a time because it not only fostered a community, but it was a service that took a stand against the man. It was a statement that said, I own this game and I will play it with others how I want to. One, two. Huh. And please, if you have stories of the original set of process of one and older versions of CS during that period, please take some time to write about your memories in the comments. Maybe even share your one ID. As we get older, many of the memories are becoming lost of time and people should hear your stories about those days as your experiences have transformed online gaming into what it is today. And that shouldn't be forgotten. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to reading your experiences.